It's bring your editor to work day. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Grant. I've been here about five years. Um, you may remember me from such videos as Level 2 Tex and uh, the Intel Court one. That was a good one. You remember that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. hope Intel doesn't see that one. Yeah. <laughs> Intel okay. FPGA! There you go. So, this is actually kind of... Your hobby is a little bit more hardcore of this than mine, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm kind of into it as well. I mean, yeah. I grew up with Nintendo and... Uh, Nintendo games are fun. I don't really like the company that Nintendo has become. Yeah. But this is a field programmable gate array, which can emulate older consoles. Yeah, it can do basically everything up through the PS1. Um, Nintendo 64 is a little, little bit of an edge case, but uh, it can do computers, consoles, arcade, basically whatever from up through like 1996. So I have all of those old consoles and a lot of my old games but it is sort of fun to be able to enjoy those in different formats. And I think even Nintendo is surprised at how much revenue those generate because... Yeah, yeah they um, they made a lot of money on Virtual Console on the Wii U and on the, uh, the Wii. <laughs> now things have gone back into the vault. A it's little fun. bit. They've got the, the Switch Online stuff, which is very expensive for what it is. So this is the, the miracle of all of that is this is what's called a field programmable gate array and so this is this is an altera thing but you know intel the acquisitions and whatnot this is the de 10 nano the intel fpga university program so this is like a generic board that you buy for doing field programmable gate array research and it's got some onboard uh resources but to do what we need to do we actually need to add a little bit more ram to it yeah. because it's a different kind of ram so it'll um It'll run a lot of smaller stuff, like I think up through Super Nintendo without the RAM. But yeah, this little guy right here lets you run stuff like Neo Geo and PS1. So a little bit more advanced. And the, the reason this is so magical is because instead of a piece of software uh, taking the old game and sort of translating it and then running it on whatever hardware you're, you're you know, like an x86 desktop computer, your laptop, whatever, this actually recreates the circuitry or the gates, that's why it's called a field programmable gate array. It's field programmable, meaning that it's reprogrammable, but it's a gate array, which is the transistors that are usually built into the silicon. Now, FPGAs are ludicrously expensive to manufacture, so FPGAs with a lot of gates are also ludicrously expensive, and this is relatively expensive. I mean, you can get a used Game Boy for like yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah, this is about 200 bucks, something like that, for yeah. just the board, and then the RAM was probably an extra 60, something like that. Yeah, but it emulates, well, emulate is not the right yeah. word. It it recreates the old hardware. There are a lot of people that refer to it as emulation. And it's not technically, it is, some, someone has emulated the hardware via hardware. Yeah, by definition of the word emulation, it is emulation, but it's a little bit more special than software-based emulation. Yeah. Uses, I think it's what's called, I'm a lay person, it's called HDL, uh, Hardware Description Language. It's yeah. basically like coding, taking the schematic and translating it into code to run it on this little guy right here. And uh, the, the special thing about it is a lot of software emulators are imperfect. Um, yeah, I've played Wheelchair Mario on Nesticle, and uh, sometimes the audio glitches and does weird stuff. What, what was the game we were playing? Because it did it consistently. Uh, Turtles in Time um, is the one that I I was testing on here uh, for the Super Nintendo. And it, um, yeah, some audio bugs in the first level, and on this there's just nothing. Because it's yeah. literally, it's, <laughs> it's not the hardware. literally, it's figuratively the <laughs> hardware, but it's... It's not, the, the, the machine can't tell the difference. It's, it is the hardware for all intents and purposes. Now, the original Nintendo was designed in the 80s, maybe the late 70s actually. And uh, you know, things have moved on a bit since mm -hmm. then. And there is a cultural and a preservation aspect of this. Uh, we've, where we are today in 2022 is not great. And we're in this land of copyright maximalism where you know, I would say, at least for me personally, it's part of my heritage and culture having this. Absolutely. But I don't want part of my culture and heritage to feed a faceless corporate machine who exists to get more money. Did you see they're adding De Nuvo to Switch games? Maybe? Yeah, they're adding De Nuvo to Switch games. And so, you know, as the hardware has become more complex, doing this kind of thing in the future is going to also get exponentially more complex. Hopefully yeah. our computers will be able to keep up. You know, it's funny. The, the patents, you could patent a Nintendo and the patents will have expired. 
because patents are only good for 20 years. You patent the hardware, and then after that it enters the public domain. This is supposed to be the limited domain copyright This is for the public good, but copyright lasts forever. Yeah, oh yeah, it's as long as, you know, it's Disney and we companies will, like Disney. We'll be dead when Mario Brothers goes out of business. Yeah. I mean, theoretically. I Mickey, mean, when is copyright. Mickey? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what's funny is, Speaking of copyright, the Winnie the Pooh stuff just went out of uh, oh, public yeah. domain, and you saw the weird horror movie they're making. And all kinds uh, of stuff. Sherlock Holmes, but not the empathetic feeling Sherlock yeah. Holmes. The we, cocaine super, yeah. you know, super cop Sherlock Holmes. And even then, you still get like the the Arthur Conan Doyle estate getting a little persnickety about stuff. <laughs> it's it's really odd. But yeah. this is, um, you know, it's kind of like a retro pie, but it's it's better. And this is kind of where the I think the future of emulation is going because. The future of preservation. Preservation, really. yeah. yeah. That's a better way of putting it. Because if you think about it, when you're playing a game on a traditional emulator, on a software emulator, you're not really getting the exact same experience someone in 1992 was getting. Oh, yeah. But with this, I mean, if you <laughs> plug it into a CRT television, of course, you know. The, There's a lot of people doing software work to emulate CRT. It's like, oh, yeah. you have an 8K display with microscopic yeah. pixels. We're going to emulate what the phosphor dots There's look a lot like. of really good looking stuff like that. And actually, it's it's interesting you mentioned that because you can use a lot of that stuff on this. And the thing about this is that I was actually surprised. I'm not a very technical person. Um, I enjoy it, but I'm not educated in it, I guess I would say. This was really easy to set up, like it, crazy easy. And um, we got a little micro SD card. Which yeah, it's got the. There's some stuff we found on the internet on there, and some stuff that I might have ripped from my home setup. Yeah. But um, really, it's basically plug and play. The most complicated thing is flashing a disk image to the SD card, and then you're done. And, you know, we've got. You can load it over the network. Yeah. And after over that, the network, and... it does have, yeah, Ethernet, and it'll auto update. There's a script that I have that I'll link in the description that it just auto updates. And it's. Um, it's effortless, basically. It's also a really good way if you're interested in FPGAs and doing, you know, uh, stuff with the hardware definition language. Looking at how all this is put together, because it's open source, mm -hmm. is also a great platform to start from, while also sort of feeding your video game addiction. Yeah, totally. It's. Um, I learned some stuff, and I'm a, I'm a layperson, basically. It's just looking at the way all this is put together. It's just kind of astonishing the things that the the community's been able to do with Mister. I mean, this thing's got DDR3 memory on board and USB and USB on the go and a G sensor and a micro SD, slide switches, HDMI, TX connections, five volt power adapter, Bluetooth for the Bluetooth heads. Uh. So the controller actually I've connected with USB-C. The reason I brought this, this is a PlayStation 5 controller. And um, <laughs> it works fine. It works fine. It works great. It, um, I didn't expect it to because I read that um, you know, powered USB stuff might be a little bit hinky, but no, it just works fine. Well, the patent on the original Nintendo controller has expired. You yeah. can 3D print your own. You can, and they have um, <laughs> they have adapters for USB and stuff too. <laughs> the thing I would recommend though, if you're gonna get into this and use it as, a, um, as something to play games on. So since we've only got the one USB here, it's mic I think micro or mini, this one, micro USB or uh, mini USB. Mini, micro. Okay, so this is micro. I've got a micro USB to USB adapter, and um, you know I have to keep hot plugging the keyboard. USB and, on the go adapter. Yeah, there you go. I have to hot plug, hot plug the keyboard and the uh, controller to each other. Just you know. Oh, but you could probably do it with a USB hub. Them. Yeah, USB hub board, and also they have boards that have fans on them because this does get pretty hot, <laughs> and you don't want to ruin your two hundred dollar FPGA playing Contra. I can't wait for people to start using these as repair components. It's like substitute repair yeah. component. It's like, oh, I've got an arcade cabinet, but it doesn't work. I have the original Pac-Man, like the ROMs, yeah, the and I don't have anything else. And it's like, okay, can I plug that into this somehow and start playing Pac-Man? And is that, is that, is this, is Ship of Theseus? Yeah. I, I've like, repaired my console. This whole thing is a Ship of Theseus thing because it is a Super Nintendo, but it's not. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. I've, I've transferred the soul of my physical Super Nintendo into, yeah. Also something I want to mention is there's a company out there called Analog, and they do a lot of stuff with FPGA and just recently, they have a, um, a handheld system called the Analog Pocket that plays a bunch of handheld games, but also they've opened that up. And so a lot of Mr. Cores are being ported to analog systems. So if you want to get into this in a little bit of a lower cost, but a little bit less flexible, I'd recommend looking at analog stuff and I can link that too. I have a feeling that, you know, thinking about video game preservation today, uh, you know, it's like, 
will the AAA titles be preserved? Probably not as well as like Terraria yeah. and RimWorld and things like that where the developers aren't completely terrible people. Well, even with Terraria, you gotta think it's been patched so much. Yeah. Like, if you wanna play 1.0 Terraria, can you? Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, how do we preserve World of Warcraft? Yeah, the original World yeah. of Warcraft before they started. I mean, they have classic, but <laughs> like, how do you, you know, how do you preserve all these games that need to be patched? Because basically every game, indie or AAA, needs to be patched now. And That's Blizzard the doesn't want are. the online no. server to exist. No, they not. Then they don't. Absolutely not. <laughs> but um, it's just one of those challenges that we'll face, and I'm pretty sure we'll get we'll get there because people are dedicated enough to preserving things that I think we'll, we'll be in a good spot. It's just going to take a while. I want to preserve the things that everybody doesn't think is worth preserving. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I've got a. Bebe's kids on the SNES. Great. I'm going to play that. I was thinking about the uh, the E.T. game that they dug oh, up the in Oh, the 2600 E.T.? Yeah. Oh, we're going to make a ton of these. There's plenty oh. of copies of that. Just ask Harry Scott Warshaw where they all are. Just... Selling a few on eBay yeah, at a time. It's, it's fine. <laughs> the game is, uh, that game is really interesting, but that's a, I that's didn't, a question for me. I, I didn't realize it, but apparently it's also a problem on eBay to get new Super Nintendo games, or to get vintage Super Nintendo mm -hmm. games, they're manufacturing them again. I know, yeah, just absolutely. Just randos, Repro carts, not Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> Repro carts are a big thing because all the ROMs are out there and you can just put it on the put yeah. it on the board. I also like that somebody dumped, what uh, the, the thing from Nintendo, the NES Mini, mm -hmm. somebody dumped the ROMs from the NES Mini and they came from the internet. Yeah, they just came from the internet. <laughs> it's just, you know, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine if you're Nintendo. If you're Nintendo, it's fine. <laughs> Anyone right. else, it's just forget it. But yeah, I think FPGAs are cool in general, and it is nice to see a project like this. It's too bad that Nintendo will never, ever, ever have a store where you can just, it's like $5, here's your lifetime Super Mario Brothers license. You can play Super Mario Brothers yeah. in all its forms. All its, yeah, but you know, as long as this exists, <laughs> we have alternatives. I was like, I already own three copies of it, but I would buy a fourth copy just because. It's mine. <laughs> we gotta go to the Minus world. Yeah, you know? or the world that is the glitch area yeah. in the ROM. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing. Of course. This is really awesome. I'm glad to, glad to share. That's Grant. That's this, me. That's level one. That's level one. And we'll see you in the forum. See you later, guys.